Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry, and today I'm going to show you how I made these crocheted flower pots. I made three different styles of flower for my pot, and used three different techniques to attach the flowers into the soil. Some things you'll need for this tutorial are a size I crochet hook, a pair of scissors, some stitch markers or bobby pins, a yarn needle, and I'll be using three different yarns at the same time to create a soil-like texture in the fabric. I'll use Aran Weight yarn in black, dark brown, and light brown, but this will also cause the yarn to be much thicker like a heavier weight yarn, so that's why I need a larger hook to work three yarns at the same time. You'll need some flowers to use to make your plant. I'm going to show you three different techniques to make a potted plant, and I'll use three different flowers to show each method. You can find the tutorial for each of these flowers in the description below. And of course, you'll need some sort of container to put your soil and flowers into. I'll be using this cute tiny pail that I found at the craft section at Target, but you can use pretty much any container. You could even crochet yourself a flower pot, but that's a whole other video. Because I'm using this empty pail and making the flowers a sort of lid that fits inside, I'll be able to use this flower pot as a hidden container. Also, you should bear in mind that whatever you use needs to be heavy enough to offset the weight of the flowers that you're making. Since I'm using a container made of metal, I don't really have to worry about this, but if you use something lighter, like a plastic container, you may want to weigh down the inside of the pot with something to keep it from toppling over. If you'd like to follow along with this project, you can find the written pattern for this project on my website. You can find the link to that in the description below. First, I'll make the circle of soil using three different yarns at once, the black, dark brown, and light brown, to create a soil-like texture in the fabric. So with all three yarns at once, I'll create a slip knot to begin the work. I'll make sure the slip knot is sort of loose before I continue, because I'll be leaving a hole at the center of the soil that I'll close later. Then I'll chain two. The first chain will count as the foundation chain, and the next chain will count as the first stitch of the row. So I'll mark that chain as the first stitch. Then into the second chain from the hook, which is the foundation chain I just made, I'll single crochet five more times so that I have a total of six stitches in my row. I'll be working in the round to create the circle, so I'll crochet directly into the first stitch of the row to begin my next row. In this row, I'll increase every stitch by single crocheting two times into each stitch of the row. Now I'll continue to increase until the size of the soil is about the same width as the pot that I'm going to use. I'll increase for three more rows, by the next number for each row. In this next row, I'll increase every second stitch of the row, then in the next row, I'll increase every third stitch of the row, then every fourth stitch of the row in my last row of increase. If you want to see a more detailed explanation for how to increase, check out my increasing tutorial. At the end of my row of increase, I'll slip stitch to the first stitch of the row to end the row.
Then I'll cut off my yarn. Next, I'll insert the flowers into the soil circle. I'll show you three methods of doing this using three different types of flowers, but you can use any of these methods with any of these flowers or any other crochet flower design you like, as long as the flower is made with a wire inside. First, I'll make the flower pot of daisies. For this method, I just made three daisies. I'm just going to place the stem of each flower through the stitches of the soil in random places. Then on the underside of the soil, I'll fold each stem down a little so that each stem tip is parallel to the soil circle. Then I'll sew each stem down to the soil using the brown yarn to match the soil. Then I'll just pull the slip knot at the center closed, since for this method I didn't place the flowers in the center. Then I'll sew in all those ends. Next I'll make the flower pot of pansies. For this method, I made five flowers. So I'm just going to stick all the stems through the soil at the hole that I left at the center of the soil where I created the slip knot. I'll arrange the flowers how I want them. Then I'll pull on the tails of the slip knot to tighten the hole at the center of the soil around the base of the flowers. Then on the underside, I'll fold each stem down a little parallel to the soil in a circle around the center. Then again, sew them down using the brown yarn to match the soil. This next step is an optional step, but at the top I'll sew the bases of all the stems together about a half an inch using the green yarn to match the stems. Then I'll sew in all the ends. And finally, I'll make the flower pot of fire flowers. This is the most complex method. For this method, I've made three flowers, 
and I've made one of them with a slightly thicker stem, which means that I've twisted an extra layer of wire when I was making the stem so that this flower is a little more solid and supportive. This flower is going to act as the base. So I'll place the stem through the hole at the middle of the soil where I created the slipknot, then I'll tighten the hole at the center of the slipknot by pulling on the tails. Then I'll once again fold down the stem a little parallel to the soil on the underside, and sew the end down again using my brown yarn to match the soil. Next, I'll attach another flower to the first one by folding down about an inch at the bottom of the stem of the new flower, creating a right angle at the bottom of the stem. Then I'll line that folded down end up with the stem of the first flower, about a half an inch down from the leaves. Then I'll sew the flowers together all along that part of the stems, using a green yarn to match the stems. When I finish sewing the flowers together, I'll curve the stem of the new flower back up. Then I'll do the same thing with another new flower, and attach it to the stem of the second flower in the same way, and when I'm done, I'll sew in all the ends. Now that all the flowers are attached to the soil circles, I can place the soil lid in the flower pot. And I'll sort of move the wire of the stems around a little to pose the flowers in a way I like. Depending on how many flowers you made and what kind of container you used, you may want to place something inside the flower pot to weight it down. and now the flower pot is finished. If you're interested in the written pattern for any of the flowers that I used in this video, you can find the link to my pattern store on Ravelry where you can find all of my designs in the description below. What other potted plants do you think I should make? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you use this technique to make a flower pot of your own, I'd love to see your interpretation. You can find all of my social media links in the description below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you could press the like button or share it on social media. And if you'd really like to help out the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. You can get some pretty cool perks through Patreon, like seeing my videos early, access to some of my prototype patterns, and discounts in my Ravelry store, depending on your level of donation. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash fairyrings. You could also subscribe and click the bell icon so that you don't miss my next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!